Hello, my name is Indrik. I am the uh, co-founder at AlphaBlues. Uh, thank you for joining our uh, webinar uh, on the topic of four reasons why uh, chatbot projects fail. Um, this is already our third women webinar in the series that where we cover chatbots and then talk about them at length. Um, so if you're interested in our previous ones, uh, please check them from our website, alphablues.com. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, Alpha Blues AI. You can just search for that and you'll find all the webinar content uh, from there. Um, so what I will do now is I will uh, switch over to the um, uh, presentation and uh, we, will, uh, we will get uh, started. All right. Uh, So um, the title is, is Four Reasons Why Chatbot Projects Fail. And the why we are uh, talking about this is that we see there's a lot of projects out there. Um, and some of them go successfully, some not. Um, so in here, I will cover the four main reasons uh, that we see uh, why projects fail. Um, and also I have a bonus fifth one uh, in the end. Um, uh, before that, I will uh, briefly talk also about our company. And then if you have questions, then you can just chat and ask them in the side pane of the uh, of the webinar app, and I'll make sure to answer them later. Uh, the presentation is about 20 minutes, and I'll leave uh, 10 minutes for Q&A in the end. So uh, we'll make sure to have all the uh, all the uh, questions covered. So, so let's dive in uh, very briefly about us. Uh, we are a company based in Europe, and we have been building uh, chat automations for the past four years. Uh, we specifically focus on, uh, on on chatbots and live chat and uh, automating the chat channel. Uh, we started out because we saw that there's a lot, brands can do a lot better communication with their customers at scale. Um, and so far, our uh, bots are doing uh, 250,000 conversations each month with customers. So we have a wealth of experience uh, from various enterprise customers. Um, and I'm calling them chatbots. We can also call it conversational AI or virtual assistants. Uh, basically, it means machines that are smart enough to understand natural language and also to provide adequate responses. Um, from the point of view where I'm talking about is that when I look at a chat automation, I'm looking at it from the end-to-end -end point of view. So starting with the customizable chat window in all kinds of web and internal environments, I'm looking for the conversational interface builder and also custom AI and natural language algorithms. So this is all actually what you need to create virtual assistants and chatbots. And then what we have in our product on the other side is actually a live chat, which means that when the virtual assistant cannot help you, it hands over the conversation to the right agent at the right time in the right priority. So you have intelligent routing, you have smart live chatting and all kinds of analytics. So actually it's not just building a bot that understands questions. It's a lot of these things that fit into the customer's workflow. And as a testament to product strength, we're actually featured in, in PNN uh, during the COVID crisis where we actually built the, the Corona bot for the, uh, for the global community. Uh, and you know it's uh, live today as well. If you go to coronabot.co, uh, get answers straight from WHO uh, resources. So it has been helpful for, for many, many members of the community. Um, so let's uh, dive straight in. Okay, so what is the, um, and these are not specifically uh, in, in particular ranking, um, but the top four or five that we see. So so one is, is too high expectations. And, um, and it becomes when customers start out with projects, then we often, over time, find out that the expectations, how they go into the projects differ from ours, right? And I think this is very important if you are a vendor, but also, you know, mainly if you're a customer, that you set the right expectations uh, because that can sort of not understanding what's possible can lead the project off to a, to a wrong start. So so what do I specifically mean, the, mean by that? So some of the reasons behind these high expectations that we see are that, uh, uh, some companies consider chatbots to be easy to make. Um, and there is some truth to that. So you can make a simple bot that says hi, and you, the bot says hello, and then you ask a question, what's your name? And the bot answers, my name is bot. 
it makes it sound very simple and easy to make. However, at the core, what you're doing though, if you are a large company and let's say you have hundreds of thousands or millions of customers, is that you're actually creating a virtual contact center, um, digital version of a, of, a, of a contact center person, teaching it all the things that a contact center person knows and, and, and having that bot answer those questions adequately. So from that point of view, you're kind of creating like a digital human brain which is completely different than a simple hi hello chatbot right so some of the things that you know when people have looked at bots they might think oh it's so simple i just ask something and it answers um but in turn when you deploy to enterprise with the needs that it needs to know it becomes a bit harder the second reason is you know, ai is hyped beyond its capabilities um this is true for companies that haven't done any machine learning projects usually uh, they might have a somewhat limited and, and, and rightfully so understanding of, of the nuances of the AI project implementations. And, you know, just because newspapers write about great things that big tech companies are doing and that seem very sexy, um, it doesn't mean that, you know, the chatbot you deploy will know everything automatically and, and answer every question perfectly, right? So, so these are some of the reasons for high expectations. And so the recommendations that we have for, for customers is, you know, get in touch with reality, right? So two best ways to do it, you know, either talk with an experienced vendor and look at their references and, you know, if they have deployed things, talk to them and be honest about it and say, you know, hey, what can I expect? How good are these bots? How well do they answer? Uh, things like that. Even better yet, um, talk to other companies who in your industry or region have actually implemented the bots. So, you know, if, if it's the same same city or, or same country or, or same region, uh, somebody has implemented chatbots, just reach out to them, ask about it, uh, of course. And especially if they're not a competitor in your domain, uh, they might be willing to provide advice. You just get some insight into, into how they did it and, and, and what happened and what didn't happen. So. Uh, this makes it easy to align expectations in the beginning and, and sets you off the uh, the right the right foot as you go forward. Uh, the second reason the projects fail is is time and scope of the project, right? So so what I mean here is that uh, there are a couple of things. So one of the things uh, we see quite often is that um, many of the chatbot projects, the requests for proposals or tenders, uh, they they are overplanned. Uh, so sometimes the uh, the planning starts out with you know 200 requirements and there's a lot of features and a lot of things that get crammed into the project uh, without maybe the customer first realizing like what they want to accomplish or do they actually need all of that or is it something that they can get by easier uh, because the thing is that the more complex you make the whole tendering process and the more nuanced the higher the cost of, of the bots going to be for sure right um, and sometimes also too many features are pushed in the first project. So if you haven't deployed any conversational AI before, you know, having it being authenticated, working with voice across five channels and, and four languages is a bit of an overkill, right? So, you know, first maybe do a POC or a pilot, try it out, see if it actually, you know, solves the problem that your company has. And, uh, and, and, and that sets you sets you on the right track. Um, because, you know, if you have timelines uh, that are also usually short, so, you know, there's there's a lot of planning that goes into tenders, but then the implementation has to be very quick because you want to see the results. Then sometimes, you know, creating all these integrations with your APIs and then, you know, your internal processes, two to three months in enterprises is a very short time. Um, so be careful of keeping that in mind. And also, of course, the more you ask, you know, the budgets are, you know, two, three X smaller than actual ambitions, right? So you have to be mindful that uh, the more you want, the more nuanced it goes, um, the higher the cost of the, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the project. So this is something that's, that's useful for uh, companies to keep in mind. Um, so at number um, three uh, is, is the lack of communication between the vendor and the buyer. And it, it seems very straightforward and, and simple and maybe even overly simplistic. Um, but when we look at how these projects go, this is actually very important um, because, um, you know, in traditional software projects, of course, um, you you have a you have an outcome, right? You know, the company says, "I want this to be programmed. This is a system. It has inputs. It has outputs. You know, code code me this, and 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 it's ready." 
and you know even software projects of course there are a lot of challenges with those however when you work with um with things like conversational ai it's kind of ambiguous uh, it's you're creating you're stepping into the unknown uh, the buyer is is at most times unaware of actually like what the end result will be plus also how good it will be so how how well it will perform uh, will i like it like will it keep make my customers happy or maybe it will answer wrongly right so so the communication actually is is uh, is, uh, is a lot more important between the vendor and the buyer because you are in uncharted territories, um, and and usually this is what you see, right? So this is you know one side is from the vendor, the other side is is from from the uh, uh, fr from the buyer, um, and so the reasons why this happens is that of course when you have uh, tenders and RFPs, then vendors want to win and they promise a lot. And then customers, you know, they can read into it and, and you know, interpret things differently, leading to misunderstandings. Um, so what can happen during the project is, you know, is, is a very simple dialogue. It's like the customer saying, like, I'd like to have function X. And vendor says, well, X is a whole new functionality. We have to build it. It's not available. But then customer says, you know, but, you know, I think X is a small feature addition, right? So it shouldn't be that hard to make. Um, and the reason, this happens is that in conversational AI, you have quite a bit of uh, uh, customization uh, for uh, for company processes. So different companies they use different um, uh, different systems. They have different processes. You know, this one size fits all thing uh, in, in in chatbots doesn't doesn't really fit. Um, so you have to have adaptability, and so many times uh, this actually runs pretty deep. Uh, so the the uh, the customers uh, might have some requests that you think are uh, you know over the top, but they think are very straightforward, and so it becomes this issue where they like to have some functionality, and then the vendor keeps building and building it until, of course, it becomes very complex and then very tailor made, right? So it's it's very important uh, in the beginning to sort of scope out the whole solution, what is needed, because you know once you get into the project, it's it becomes difficult uh to meet the time and budget requirements when the needs are are growing right so that's why the communication is really really important in the beginning and also i advise for for those that are buying um, conversational ai and chatbots is to have a one project owner inside their company who ultimately decides who's like the the father or mother of, of the chatbot uh, because uh, that makes it easy for for vendors to just you know they have one person whom they have to listen to from the customer side who has the mandate to deliver this project right uh, and so in in companies there's a lot of opinions uh, but you know that one person ultimately he or she will be in charge and saying you know what gets done and why because you know you have a lot of features and things that that need to happen uh, but ultimately not all of them maybe can happen so this is what i advise to have a clear project ownership at the, at the customer company um number four of, of why um, uh, many chatbot projects fail is is more on the technical side of, of the bot building and this is not carefully enough designed conversational flows um, uh, this can be another um, webinar on its own uh, but I'll cover it here briefly uh, just to go over some of the things that, that we are seeing so, so one of the things when when people start out building the, the chatbot is having limited to no hierarchy and organization among the topics, right? So, you know, here you see a, a sample a list of topics about there's a menu, there's a weather, there's maybe a carousel, there's some password change topics. It's just an example, but all these topics are all over the place and they are mixed, right? Um, and you know. This can be fine if you have uh, 20 topics, 20 intents, um, and that's it. But you know, if you are serious about conversational AI, uh, you know your bot will grow 200, 200, maybe 500. You know, we have customers that have I think more than 1,000 topics. Um, so it actually becomes a vast knowledge base uh, on its own. Uh, and so when that happens. Um, uh, you might lose track of actually uh, which topics you have and which you don't, 
and you start duplicating them, right? And then you will start running into problems because the bot might give answers and actually the answers already exist, but you retrain them elsewhere and those are not as good. So having a clear structure of you know, organizing things in folders, you have one topic, let's say it's about loans, the other topic is about uh, mortgages, the third one is about credit cards, like whatever it is, whatever industry you're in, uh, that type of structure is very important from the beginning uh, because ultimately it's sort of the, uh, it's a quote unquote, the brain of the bot. Um, so the, the better you organize it, the, the clearer it is and the easier it is to, to keep it up and, and change it, right? Um, once it becomes a, a, a mess of, of, you know, 300 topics and mixed together, it's, it's, it's hard to clean up. Uh, the, other, uh, the other reason also is, is, you know, you can have broken workflows for the customer. And, and here's a, a sample uh, uh, flow that I just made to highlight the point is that, you know, when, when you have a customer and they're chatting and they're saying, hey, you know, I want to talk to a human. And then your bot can say something like, you know, agents are not available, like try again later. Um, you know, yeah, it says you're awesome and, and has a positive note to it. But ultimately, you know, uh, the customer does not reach uh, the human. So you should avoid things like that uh, because, you know, you want to follow things through. You want to have a, let's say, maybe an offline form or maybe an, an email address or, or just a phone number to call or, or, you know, ideally, of course, they would send the message through the chat to the to the agent so you want to have something that just doesn't say you know hey currently this cannot be done come back later right i think this is the the last thing that the customer wants wants to hear if they're taking uh if they're in contact with you so keep that in mind um and the last thing is as i promised um why projects fail is is the fifth one uh it, the title is not bonus it's just the, the bonus uh bonus reason uh, why 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 projects most often fail but uh, it comes down to bot training, um, and the um, many times the, the training is, is is not done carefully enough. Um, and what this means is that, that um, the uh, the phrases and utterances related to topics and 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 how the bot is built up is sort of done in the beginning, um, but not careful, not enough attention is paid to like how the bot will evolve through the end, right? So. You know, if you have 30 topics and you're training against 30 topics, but then you have to be careful about, you know, which phrases you actually insert under those 30 topics, because later on from those 30 topics might become 100 and 300 topics. And then the initial phrases that you train actually will be misleading already because the content is expanding and the initial training, when you consider it now, is, is wrong, right? Um, so you can have this uh, contradicting training phrases under under topics, uh, and later on, you know, it might cause you problems. Not just not not that the natural language understanding or the AI is wrong, but it's just that you have given mixed instructions to the bot over time. Um, so again, this comes back to the point number four: is that be very careful about how you set up uh, those uh, workflows and how you set up. Uh, the content of the bot, so that actually the the bot is very knowledgeable of um, of uh, how how to perform best over uh, over time. Uh, so these uh, these are the 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 four plus one reasons why most uh, chatbot projects fail. Of course, there are several other ones, but we want to cover here things uh, very um, briefly and and sort of very uh, succinctly. So, you know, hopefully you get, you know, a lot of practical things out of this if you are implementing your chatbot project or uh, are considering uh, of, um, are considering of uh, having, uh, having one. Um, so let's see if there are any, uh, any questions. Uh, if there are questions, uh, then uh, feel free to uh, write them in, in the questions or, or, or chat pane. Um, in the meantime, uh, the, one of the last things that I wanted to uh, uh, wanted to cover here was that uh, I think uh, companies uh, are getting uh, smarter when they are building uh, those conversational AI uh, solutions and systems. Um, the reason is that you know the market is getting a bit more mature. There are more of these bots out there. Um, recently, uh, you know, many many of the bots have been just very simple, you know, question and answer type of things. Uh, but now, 
Uh, you know, I think the digital transformation among companies is moving forward uh, very quickly due to the, you know, the crisis. And, uh, and companies are thinking of, you know, how can we have more, conf- you know, more complex workflows, processes? How can we have all of that inside uh, our organization? And how can we automate that? Um, so I, uh, I car- encourage you to uh, keep those uh, uh, five uh, failures in mind uh, when you uh, are running your own uh, you know, project. Hopefully you don't come across them. Uh, if you do, don't worry. Uh, other people have, have done it before. You're not the first one. Um, and, uh, and if there's any help you need, uh, you know, reach out to your local vendor. Uh, feel free to ask us, uh, ask our bot on our website or, or shoot us an email, and then we'll be happy to provide you insight of, of how to build things and, and how to get you started on, on, the, uh, on the right track. Uh, okay, so we have, uh, we have one question. Um, uh, okay, the question is, how hard is it how hard is it to redo or repair the bot if the structure of the training is poorly done? Um, okay, so that's a good question. Um, so it, it's doable, um, but of course, the, the main thing, it depends on, on when you do it. Um, so what do, what do I mean by that? If you have, a, if you have a, let's say, a bot that has about 30 topics, and then you decide that nah, the menu is a bit wrong and I need to organize it, it's relatively straightforward. If you have a bot already like 100 and 200 topics, um, then uh, repairing the structure and training, uh, I would first advise to go through, let's say the topics. Okay, let's look through the topics and see if they are relevant at all. Like what, what the bot is actually answering and remove the duplicate, uh, the duplicate uh, answers because if there's a question about, let's say credit card, and then there's, a, then there's an answer a topic called credit card. And the other one is like, I don't know, credit credit card plus and they're actually the same product just have one right have one um so so remove the duplicates you get a sort of clean structure into the bond and then make sure that the topics you will have remaining inside the bot go through the training phrases and if some of them um, are too ambiguous i just delete those phrases uh, because ultimately what you might have is wrong phrases tied to topics and then the bots just talking all over the place so rather have like 15 clear phrases related to the topic of credit card than just think like oh, i'm gonna put this one and this one and i have like 100 ambiguous ones right um because you you want and you want to be sure that you capture the right intent um so it's doable but um usually i suggest uh, do it with your vendor um they should have experience in this. Uh, if not, just you know, make sure you understand your your. Make sure you get the bot, bot structure right, and then make sure that you get the training phrases right. Um, because the the structure of the bot, I cannot emphasize this hard enough, uh, is that you need to have your topics organized. Uh, you know, sometimes what we actually advise is that let's say uh, let's say you're a bank, right? Easy example, and you offer debit cards and credit cards maybe you just want to do one topic that's called um, cards and then you train all the phrases onto that topic and then from that topic you let's say have i don't know uh, multiple choice selections of you know credit card debit card i don't know amex whatever it is instead of training it straight into credit card or straight into the debit card so you sort of create this um, you create these nodes where you bring people to that node and then from there the person can choose because you never know if I'm going to ask about like I need a card to finance my hobbies I don't know maybe they want the debit credit Amex what what card they want and if you just train that straight to credit card maybe it's actually the wrong thing that they're looking for so an easier and safer way is to sort of create this umbrella topics and branch out from there right um where you know it's it's clearer it's you have a higher likelihood of getting the right intent uh and then a second thing that i can also advise is that um this of course depends on on the type of bot you're using but what you can have is a thing like where you um uh when you give an answer you just you just don't give one answer uh, well this is something we have actually implemented in, in alpha ai is that the bot gives an answer and if, if its confidence is uh, underneath a certain confidence threshold score it actually gives multiple answers right because you don't you know you by that you increase the likelihood 
that the customer gets the right question. So if they ask about, you know, card for financing hobbies, then it says, you know, hey, did you mean credit card, Amex, or debit card, right? And then they can say, oh, actually, I wanted to get an Amex, right? This is what I meant. Uh, so you you increase again the likelihood of getting the uh, the right um, the right answer. Ho hopefully, this this answered your your question. Um, okay, uh, let's see if if there's another another question. Uh, I'll I'll give you a short minute to think about that. Um, but yeah, in, in general, um, keeping the content of the bot very clear is, is, is a good one. We might have a webinar coming up with that uh, in, in the near future. Um, and in the, in the next webinar, we'll be, um, we'll be talking about uh, various channels uh, uh, where we, you can actually deploy uh, bots and, and how to think about that. So there's a lot of topics in the space, uh, space to cover. So Okay, um, if there are no more questions, I'll, I'll end it here. I hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, we have more content on our YouTube site, just search for Alphabos AI or check out alphabos.com in our blog. Uh, we have a lot of content. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to us. And I hope to see you in our future webinars again. Until then, take care.